Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am so excited you guys are with me all oh, these beautiful Saturday mornings. It's wonderful July 30th here all across the world. But uh, thank you for joining us. We are here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, having just an amazing time with everybody in studio. And I just had to say, I actually forgot that our wonderful team put a new intro on there. What a great intro to the Different Perspectives show. Thank you, all you wonderful video media team that have put that together. Um, you guys are so talented. You're so great. Uh, you make everything run so well. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Appreciate everything you guys do. So um, excited for just a wonderful week. Had a little travel. Went down to Atlanta, but it wasn't a hormone talk. Obviously, you know those have dissipated. But I was down speaking to the students at Life College in Atlanta, Georgia. Had a wonderful dinner with them. Had a wonderful talk at the college that way. want to thank the professor that was there. Everything besides the students. It was a fantastic time with you guys. I get the opportunity to come down there and teach some case management clinically that way. Yeah, so I went down to the college and actually spoke to our Wellness Way Club where we actually got to train our students, our student doctors. As you know, we have our doctor students here, Dr. Jenny, and everybody sitting, and Patrick over there. And uh, <laughs> Carolyn, sorry, had my had a little Zevia go down the wrong pipe there. Carolyn and Jenny and Patrick here today, just hanging out. These these guys uh, heard me speak when I was down in their colleges at that time, and it's nice having them up here. And it was nice being down there. So thank you for all you guys that were there. I do appreciate it. We got so many great things happening. But that being said, I always like to go through because I am blown away by the statistics that come through monthly, and we're at the end of the month, and the amount of website hits that we had was dramatic um, and we're going to talk about that in our last 10 percent but what you can do to follow us obviously uh, some of my doctors I will have to say Dr. Jordan who's over in Eau Claire all of a sudden sent me this text message uh, yesterday he goes doc look at I got censored <laughs> all of a sudden he got censored on TikTok and they pulled down some of his videos but the one thing that you can do is if you go to our website as you can see right here you can actually subscribe to our newsletter, which gives you all of our information. You can scroll down to the bottom page, just put your email in, or there's other parts of the website that you can go to and just put your information in. As you can see, just email. We don't, we don't try to sell you anything. We don't, we don't actually try to, we keep all your information very private. Uh, we just get all of your newsletters and gets all the things that we have available for everybody. And you can see that on a regular basis. Like a bunch of you guys right now are on the website watching it on the adp.thewellnessway.com. A bunch of you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the channels that way. Uh, we thank you for always watching. But the, no joke, go to our website. That always gives you the greatest thing. Now, that being said, a lot of people say, well, Doc, you know, the nice thing about the Wellness Way, it's not just a show. The, a different perspective is just something that people can watch and learn. And really, um, um, I, had, I had a doctor the other day said, Doc, why don't you do a podcast? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a podcaster. I get interviewed on podcasts on a weekly basis, but I'm not a podcaster. As you know, as we put up slides and put up videos, I'm more of a teacher. I'm more of a person that loves to teach clinical things and, um, yes, Podcasts are amazing. I listen to them. Um, I think that, and I get interviewed on a lot of them. But even when I get interviewed on podcasts, sometimes it's a little difficult for me because I want to put up a slide and I want to teach you guys. I want to put graphics up and things like that. So the wellness way, uh, when we do our show, a different perspective, it's always going to be something teaching. But why do we teach? Why why do I get up here every week and why do I put out little videos and reels and some of that about teaching? Because as you can see right here, you can find a clinic everywhere. They're everywhere. I was just talking to Dr. Jenny before as we're walking upstairs and talking about the training and, and the success that she will have being a clinician. She will be on that, that map somewhere in the next couple of months. And what it is, you can find our wonderful doctors everywhere. Just go to the website, find a clinic near you. It's kind of great. Uh, um, that's really why we do so many teachings and everything because it allows people to come onto the show and, and actually see what's going on. And so, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a great way to find all of our practitioners. You click on there, you can see the doctors, you can see the practitioners in there. It's absolutely a wonderful thing to be able to see with them on there. Now, if you are in one of those local areas, our wonderful team put together a great video when it comes to the major thing that really gets you to understand our approach. And it's our inflammation talk. See, if you look at what happens with people in their illness today, there's one contributing factor that everybody agrees upon. If I talk to a podiatrist, the reason why I bring this up, because I know a podiatrist, 
And if they're going to look at the foot, they're going to look at things that are inflammatory to the foot. Uh, if you talk to a dentist, they're going to look for inflammation in the gums. Talk to any, any practitioner, any doctor. There's one contributing factor that leads to almost every disease on the planet, if not every disease on the planet, and that's some inflammatory state. So when I wrote this thing a long time ago, all of our clinics um, will put their own clinical examples in there, but all of our clinics do these wonderful talks called the Wellness Way Approach to Inflammation. As you can see here from our video, so let's watch it. Learn how inflammation is at the center of sickness and what steps you can make to take control of your health. Visit thewellnessway.com and click on Find a Clinic tab. Select a clinic near you and then click Attend an Event. We provide the essential guidance to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance to restore your body to total wellness. We hope by attending these events that you can take back control of your own body for a healthier future. So as you search out and actually look at the clinics and find one near you, there's, a, there's an office that does those every week. It's a really good way to actually understand what's going on and what can be done. And there's so many things that can be done. So, you know, we are going to do a, a segment today just on another Q&A because people have requested so much. The nice thing is this. The Q&A that we do here live is recorded. It can go up. You can rewatch it that way. But it's really nice when you actually have the ability for a practitioner to sit down with you and talk about things and go over things. And that's why it's nice to find a clinic. So do me a favor. If you haven't even search it to see the clinics we have all over from here to Europe and actually Hawaii and actually expanding. That's why when, when some of us team went over to Europe that way, we look continue to expand because all of a sudden we actually have two doctors that want to travel over to Europe. One wants to be in England, one wants to be in Germany. And guess what happens? We'll eventually have some great clinics there. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens over the next five years. Um, I like it this way because if, no joke, we have a doctor that wants to go to Brazil. If we have a doctor down in Brazil, I'm gonna go visit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check out Wellness Way down in Brazil and see what's down there. I'm gonna have to learn to speak language, you know what I'm saying? But I, uh, I would love to go down there. It's so nice to be able to travel all over the world to see our wonderful offices as we have them all over. Now, the great thing about having offices all over the world and the things that we do, as I said, the reason why the Wellness Way has done so amazing Yes, it's because we have an amazing media team. Yes, because we have an amazing corporate team. Yes, we have a, amazing you know, uh, interns. But really what put us on the map is the one thing that I'm still obsessed with. When I went down to Life College and spoke to all those wonderful students at our club, gotta remember, my obsession, and always will be to the day I die, is the clinical results that we get. And the stories that we hear, as you saw Dr. Sam with the, with the video that he had with the gentleman that he took care of, that's very common around here. We get the sickest of the sick that have, and, and, I, and I want to say this in a very respectful way. I always call them, they're basically our current healthcare form failures. They went through traditional care. You know, they said, that, you know, people realize going to a, an MD on a regular basis is a tradition. It's not really healthcare. It's actually what everybody does. It's traditional. It's like going to church and following the pattern. It's tradition. You say, cool. But the idea is this. If you're in bad shape, guess what happens? Sometimes you need to change some traditions, and we're going to see at the end of my last 10% that we need to have a different perspective on this stuff because the stuff that is set up there, it would blow your mind. So what we're going to do is this. Here's a young lady, and I'll set up the, the premise to you that way because we can only explain. We have a, about two hours of testimonial video on this young lady, but her name is Haley, and she got pregnant with twins. And to give you an example is and I will be very blunt about this because we'll probably put out the whole testimony video on YouTube that way. But here's what happened is if the wellness way, if we wouldn't have been in her life, they would have got rid of both babies. They would have. And I, I set that premise to you because the doctor's advice was to at least kill one of them. And you think I'm joking. It's not. And it's really sad in the pressure that they put on her to the point that I've got text messages and crying phone calls that they wanted to get rid of one of the babies. It was very sad and very devastating, but the mother and the father, who are absolutely incredible, incredible people, um, stood strong because the stuff that they learned, that their doctors were extremely wrong, and you can see the end result today. So watch this video and enjoy. My name's Haley LaRue. I've been working at The Wellness Way for about a year now. I'm doing marketing administrative support. 
I've been a patient for about four years. So my story began when I became pregnant with identical twins. As many of you know, twins are high risk, especially when they're identical, it makes you even higher risk. So everyone wants to go into their appointment at 16 weeks to find out how well everything is going and just to see your babies for the first time. Unfortunately, mine took a turn for the worst. <sighs> Take a deep breath because this is where it gets hard. At 16 weeks, I was told that in the end, I will only have one baby. From 16 weeks on, they told me to abort one of the kids so that I would at least have one kid in the end. It gets hard because nobody ever wants to hear that, especially when you're a first time mother. So when you're high risk, you have to come in every week up until you deliver to make sure everything goes okay. Every week I went in never was a positive attitude from the doctors. They always told me that the best option would be to abort one of my child. It's very difficult knowing that because you have a happy, healthy baby inside of you. I had two of them. I had the best support going. My body was doing everything it was supposed to be doing. My baby had a healthy heartbeat. It was growing. Everything was developing correctly but the doctor still put that fear in me that I would not have two babies in the end. It's not looking good. We really don't think the other one is gonna make it another week. So every day, every second that went by, I had to make sure that I felt two babies kicking the whole time. Nobody ever wants to fear that in their life. There were weeks where they would go on and tell me that they don't know if my baby would last another second. There were times where we were sent to other states, to other doctors, even cardiologists to make sure that, you know, the baby was okay. But in the end, they always told me that I always had to abort a baby. No one should ever, ever have to make that decision in their life. But I just prayed to God put my trust in the wellness way and know that my body does not make mistakes. And I did everything I could to support it. Every week they would come in and tell me something different as why I would have to abort a baby. Either it be one is smaller than the other, there was less fluid in the sac, or it was going anemic, which none of it was true except that it was a little smaller. I really tried hard to have a smile on my face every time I came into appointments. And there were times where I sit there and I just had my fists like this because I didn't know what more worse news they could tell me. So I just prayed and prayed to God that he would give me two blessings in the end and that everything was gonna be okay. So what does a day with two twins look like? Well, some would say it's hectic. You know, I don't even look at the clock because you do, you feed one child, you feed the other, you try to feed yourself as good as you can, and then you just go on to playing and laughing with them. And you know, they need you. My babies are three months old, happy, healthy, nothing wrong with them. And the baby that the doctors wanted to abort never was on oxygen, never was on any medication, never needed any life-saving support when it came out of me. And you know what? It brings a smile to my face because I did the right decision. And when I hold the one they wanted to abort, she all she does is just stare at me and smile because she knows she loves me so much. And we sit down, we read books together, we laugh together as they're starting to smile and giggle with me. You know, it's just really a blessing to have them in my life. And it's hard to imagine if I even made the other decision. Doc is more than just a business owner. He's a spiritual leader to me. And knowing that I have a support here 
and a family that can always give me a hug no matter what, is always there to listen to me and help support me. And to all the doctors that put trust in your body and know that your body does not make mistakes, all you have to do is support it with what it should and you can thrive. It's hard for me to watch that and not tear up. It really is. It's kind of an amazing story. And there's so much to that story that I could share with you that um, will tug on your heart. Imagine Haley coming in, walking in the office with a big old beautiful pregnant belly um, and telling her that you need to get one of those children. And you'll say, Doc, you know, what, what, you know, how could you go against what her expert doctors were saying? And I will say this, because her labs didn't show anything that they would even warrant that. It's sad. And we see this on, on my TikTok and on my Instagram that women have been trained to think that menopause is a disease process. That's why people accept being so sick during menopause because now it's just that stage of life that they have to suffer with to the day they die. And that's a, that's a complete fabricated lie. They automatically have a woman that has a pregnancy and they treat her like she's in a disease state and they treat a woman that has twins like they're a high risk automatically and don't judge it based on her labs, the things that she was going through. And so every time I looked at all the diagnostics, including the stuff that we ran, I don't believe they ever had any justification to ever say anything like that. And it's really sad because as I got to hold both those babies, imagine that the advice from the experts was to kill one of them. And yes, that's exactly what it is. Because even as she was going along past 20 weeks, they still wanted to get rid of the baby. And it's very saddened and it's interesting and I won't back down. I won't. I actually will stand in the gap for patients that need that. And um, I, know it's, I know I'm stumbling on my words, but it's just hard to hold back some of the frustration, some of the tears, some of the things, because you can't take that experience away from me. You can't take the experience away from me as sitting there holding Haley as she cries on saying the doctors are being derogatory to her and actually make her feel guilty to keep going forward. Yet her diagnostics, yet her imaging, yet her labs continue to said that there's just a beautiful, healthy baby in there. And I sat down and pointed out to her that way. Did I ever tell her what to do? I said, no, nope, Haley, you have to make your, you and your husband have to make your choice. And I, and believe it or not, and I, it sounds weird, I'll support anybody's choice. I do, I'm a, I'm a freedom person. But I will also try to stand in the gap that they don't use fear and intimidation and things that could lead to destruction. Because now when those twins come in and you can see them and see the direct pictures of them laying and smiling, and they came out healthy and happy because Haley was healthy and happy even when she got pregnant. So, yes. <laughs> oh. Anyways, watch those stories. They're, they'll, they'll be up on YouTube. They're here. You're going to see those on a regular basis. And the reason why we're bringing these to you, because this is our real life. It really is. We're a big enough company now to where these things are a normal part of what happens to all the doctors. That's, that's the experience I had, and Nicole helped take care of her too. And we just actually get to see things on a regular basis. But if you were to go to any wellness ways, as you go to a find a clinic, these are stories that are, that are very common here because, as you see, we have a different perspective. Now, with a different perspective and that being said, what we're going to do today, last week, um, Q&As always go incredibly well for us. They're always flooded. There are always so many people that have so many questions. And we were so abundant of questions. And we still went to an hour and 15 minutes of Q&A. What we're going to do now, we're going to continue it because as we got so many, most, so much feedback and so many emails. And please do me a favor. I will have my email up right now and because uh, I'm going to go through the questions. It's going to be me and Dr. Patrick. So yes, Dr. Patrick, Dr. Patrick today. And Jenny and Carolyn and Dr. Jalen and Dr. Carolyn are sitting right there. They're going to be on Facebook and YouTube at ADP. And uh, we're going to be, if you have a question, type it in that way. We do have a ton of questions from last time, but just so you took it very seriously if you have a question. But also, on my email, you can go to askdrpatrick at the, well, at the wellnessway.com. And I've got it up, no joke, right here. You can see my emails up right here. I will legitimately look at your things and we'll try to answer them. Uh, we have a bunch of questions already pre-printed out that came from last week that way, but put them in there because once again, if we do not email you directly, we'll probably use it on our show that we know somebody needs to know that way. Uh, but if you do have an email, once again, ask drpatrick at the wellnessway.com. Ask drpatrick at the wellnessway.com. And so now we're going to move into our Q&A section.
Okay, how it's gonna work today is I'm, we're gonna go back and forth. Dr. Patrick is going to ask the question. It's gonna come back to me and I'm gonna give you the best answer. I do, know, do not know what the questions are. I always try to just get them printed out and bring them. I always like to be off the cuff. I'm, I always tell people, that I love to debate, so you have to be quick on your feet. So I love questions that come out right away. So, all right, Patrick, what do we got for the first question? So here's kind of a, um, a slow ball right here. So what are some things a person can do to start their health journey? All right, where can they start? I would tell people this. You know, we talk about labs and all things, and we don't guess, we test. And, and by far, that is one of the main things. But I know sometimes starting the journey is scary. Sometimes starting the journey can get expensive. Um, you're making big changes. And remember, as you saw from Dr. Sands' video last week, the journey is, is difficult. You know, I always tell people, if you really want to enjoy life, you have to understand that most of your journey is uphill. It really is. That's why you take a hike. You go uphill. Anything downhill is very scary. So the idea is this. So where to start when it comes to health journey is number one, I would actually change um, your diet. Okay. Um, a close second for me would actually be right here, if not even more important, uh, positivity. You know, not looking, running around and saying everything is sunshine and raisins, or is it raisins, sunshine and roses. But the idea is this, is just talking about just a better attitude. You know, I've always teach my girls that, guess what? I teach my interns. You get one shot this life. One shot. You got one shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, make the best of it. So have a positive attitude. Number two, change what you put in your body. Just simple. Uh, they asked me the other day, they said, if you could choose one food, what would it be? I would tell you by far, and this is just my research, I still can't find anything better. I'm not saying there aren't anything better, but I can honestly tell you, remember, I judge everything by a clinical standpoint. And what I mean by that is this. If you ask a nutritionist, they'll just give you the foods that have certain nutrients. Uh, you ask a, a doc, they'll give you some other things that way. I'm gonna tell you everything that always applies to what happens to me clinically. That'd be like, for example, if, if um, Haley's pregnant with twins, what be, if Jesus said, what, how can I start my health journey? Or if there's any patients of that that I know that's gonna get the best clinical results, I will tell you by far, the number one product that I love the most is still apple cider vinegar. Still by far. I just can't find anything better than that. I love apple cider vinegar so much to the point I have a big jug in my shower and when I shower in the morning, I pour it on my skin. There's so many properties and then you drink it. You know, I would encourage people to consume apple cider vinegar before each meal. And people say, well, doc, I don't like the taste. Well, then get it in pill form. It's like this, you know, we have a pill form of it that way. And I'm not gonna encourage you to take the pill form. You know why? It's much more expensive. Apple cider vinegar is dirt cheap. You can get it. Well, doc, I hate the taste of it. Okay, then buy a pill form. You're just gonna pay more for it that way. So always, always encourage people to get it in the whole food form. It's no different than having liver. Eat liver. Well, doc, I don't wanna eat liver. Then you have to pay and buy some liver capsules that way that you can get that way. Now, a very close second for me, a very close second for me is gonna surprise you, it's actually coconut oil. A very close second, very close second. You know, no joke, uh, people ask about skincare all the time, and I'm like, yeah, you know, look at my skin, things, I, I put it on constantly. I legitimately, literally walk downstairs in my pantry, before I walk out, my last routine to leaving the house is I take a little part of coconut oil, rub it over my head, put it on my things, I leave the house. It's not a joke, that's actually my normal routine that I do on a, on a daily basis to make sure that my skin is being fed, but also it keeps it nice and silky smooth and, and actually regenerates really good. And I'm, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be 48 in two weeks and stuff like that. Yeah, oh my, uh, it's coming up fast. Um, but the idea is, I'm be 48 and people say, well doc, your skin's very nice. Yes, because I eat the things internally to make it nice and then I put things on my skin to make it that way. So I'd probably say those two things and then I would say my third most important thing would definitely be, if you guys haven't figured this out by now, would be some form of organ meat and then sauerkraut. You know what I'm saying? I think those, so if you look at the, the four things, so if you start to get up every morning and just be thankful that you're alive, you know, people say, uh, Doc, you know, and, and I understand there are some people that have some rough lives out there. I get it. I totally do. And there are circumstances that I'm even saddened for. When Haley came in and cried with the doctors in, guess what? I cried with her. I was just as ticked off as she was. That's a bad day. Do you know what I'm saying? I get it. But try to stay positive. Try to move forward. And then change everything and turn it that way. And just those things alone. Between having a good positive attitude and making some dietary changes, you'll see some positive. It's a great way to start. And actually, all those things I just told you right there, 
are extremely cheap. Extremely cheap. And we can do that for everybody. What's the next one, Patrick? All right. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. The organ meats are probably like one of the best that I absolutely love. And then uh, cacao right yes. after that. All right. So a uh, quick question about uh, do, men and really, uh, do men and women really need to do things differently um, on the daily basis? Because, you know, we're different hormonally. Um, so does that even mean that we have to eat differently? Yeah, that's a great question. Imagine having a household like I do, you know, with a lot of women, right? And their needs physically and what they do are different. And I know, let's do this. Let's go back, you know, 50 years ago and say that let's, let's do it, the leave it to beaver, okay? Mm -hmm. That everybody gets home, they sit down around the table and everybody eats the same thing. You know what's really funny? Mm -hmm. If you understand food allergies, that's kind of tough. It really is. It really is, because you know why? If you understand, for example, that some people need certain nutrients, some need more, some need less. Yes, and especially males and females, dramatically different. If you're a cyclic woman, I would want to see you eat certain things during certain parts of your cycle. We cover that in certain videos, go check that out. But yes, it is dramatically different. So I know it's gonna sound funny, is if you live a wellness way kind of lifestyle, you're gonna find out that mm -hmm. meals are much different Meals are much, uh, um, even at home, you're gonna find out that it's more of a grab and go because you're gonna kinda do different things. And I'm not saying you can't sit down and have supper with your family, I'm not saying that. It's just that the demands are different. Um, you might have multiple things made and your kids may eat one thing and not the other that way just because of even allergies or foods or things like that. And the demands, you know, I would like to see, you know, if it was up to me, I'd like to see uh, some uh, sweet potatoes, sweet potato chips or something like that eaten on the third week of a woman's cycle. Well. I don't mind sweet potatoes, I don't really care for them. So I may have, I'm gonna move more towards, you know, a meat product and maybe my family's gonna have more of a sweet potato during times with meat and stuff and it's very different. So I believe that you need to do different things and the demands for people are different. And for women, they're dramatically different because they change each week and their demands for nutrition change week, their demands for exercise change week. As a guy, you know, we have it, I mean this sincerely when it comes to healthcare, we have it so much easier when it comes to healthcare. We really do. Because we don't have the changes that they do, uh, as far as what I mean by they, I mean women. Uh, so therefore, guess what? We're gonna have to do different things um, and we don't have to change as much as they do. So that's okay and so I agree. There are, there are major differences. This idea that women and men are so similar is not true. It's not true. A woman that's on her first week of her cycle, the fourth week of her cycle is different. So how can it be the same as a man? It's very different. And actually, how we're affected by things is very different. So, great question. All right, so um, it's kind of a, a two for one. Um, so what's your view on cosmetics? And then uh, what can be used on the skin like coconut oil, but if you have a coconut oil um, or a coconut allergy? Sure, okay, I do like that. Um, cosmetics, I'm, I think cosmetics are great. It's just that, remember this, if they have toxic ingredients, they're actually a stress and a poison to your body. There are fantastic cosmetic companies out there that have non-toxic things. Now people are gonna ask, Doc, do you have any recommendations? No, okay, I don't. Just find a very good skincare line. Uh, find a very good uh, cosmetic company that uses non-toxic stuff. You know, um, like I tell people, I wanna make this very clear. If I ever say like Bragg's apple cider vinegar, I don't get a kickback from Bragg's at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't get a kickback for anything um, that, you know, I, I recommend. I don't have a cosmetic company. I know, actually, no joke. You know what I'd do? If I was you guys and you wouldn't wanna know, I would Facebook message or email one of the female Wellness Way doctors and they'll tell you. They'll say, well, we use cosmetics, you know what I'm saying? And so therefore, what do you use? And you can do that. You can email or Facebook uh, some of the practitioners and I guarantee that they're using a very good line because they understand the toxic effects of certain cosmetics and stuff and they're not gonna wanna use it. So I would actually do that, but yes. Um, now, once again, it, coconut oil universally, as long as you're not allergic to it, Universally, I would be using coconut oil on your skin on a regular basis. I think it's one of the best things you can do to <laughs> nourish your skin, but it's not the only thing. I said you gotta eat certain things on the inside to make sure your skin is being regenerated quite well. But once again, it also has a protection mechanism. Now remember, remember this. There is a small SPF with coconut oil, but don't use coconut oil as a sunscreen, all right? Because it absorbs, I know, Patrick did this last <laughs> week. I'm like, no, no, it has a small FPF, 
but it absorbs your body, eats it right away. So you have to apply it on like every half an hour, every <laughs> hour, just to make sure to get the FPF effect in that way. There's some people make it as a mistake. Now, if you do burn your skin because you accidentally didn't use a, a, a sunscreen, a healthy sunscreen that way, uh, I'd be putting coconut oil on there on a regular basis to calm the burn down because it does help dramatically. So, great questions. <laughs> Yeah, now you tell me that, uh, that info fact a week after. Mm -hmm. You should see my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, personal question, Doc. Okay. So if you had the choice, would you be with people or by yourself? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> wow, that's a personal one. <laughs> um, it's gonna surprise people. It's gonna surprise people with my answer. I would take being alone ever than being around people. I know it's weird because you're like, Doc, no, you're with us all the time. This is, no, 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 I need my time alone. I really do. I'm such a thinker and processor that uh, it's one of the reasons why I like being up early because it's quiet, it's peaceful, there's nobody around. Um, sometimes I will tell people this, it's not a joke. Um, if I'm around a lot of people, uh, I have no problem leaving. I don't. I, I, could be around, I could be around my kids all day and I'm like, and loving up, having a great time, playing with them and seven o'clock at night, I'm just gotta get away. And I gotta get away and I'll just go get, I'll come to the office and make a espresso, you know, with some bulletproof coffee and throw some butter in there or ghee in there and, and sit and sip and I'll go sit in my office and I'll sit in the conference room. I'll actually, I'll have a video up or something like that. And I'm a, I'm a very big processor. I like to be alone. I really do. Now, am I around people more than I'm alone? Absolutely. But if I had the choice, man, if, and, and ask the interns or ask anybody that's ever been in my house. I like to be in bed early if I can be, and the majority of the time I can. I could have people over like crazy. Nine o'clock, I'm like, you guys can stay at my house. I'm going to bed. I just don't care. Well, that's rude. No, it's not. It's just who I am. And I'm like, if you want to come over, stay at my house, go to the movie theater, go play golf down there, hang out with the girls, do whatever you want that way. Cool. I'm cool with that way. But I'm going to bed. And they, it <laughs> happens all the time. It happened last week. The interns whoever, I'm like, hey, guys, just recovering from a uh, thing. I had a little sniffle from, I think I picked up some little bug from uh, England, some of that, or Ireland. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed. I was zonked. They were there for hours after I left. That's cool. See, I tell people, it's like, in, in, in a way, I just tell people, be yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be myself, and uh, as long as you in, just communicate to people, people are not surprised that I could have 50 people over, and it's 9 o'clock at night, and I go up to bed, or I could, no joke, you think I'm joking, I could have a bunch of people over at my house that are just doing stuff that way, and because the house is kind of like a hangout place for people, and I could be there for like five, six hours, everybody, and I would literally just leave and go get a cup of coffee by myself. Just leave. You say, well, Doc, that's weird. No, that's me. You say, I'm not antisocial. I just need some time alone. You guys know this. If you're around people all the time, it's going to drive you nuts. Now, if you're an extrovert, as if you're an extrovert, some people want to be around people all the time. And that's cool. I'm like, that's it. It's just not me. So I'd rather choose to be alone sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time. All right. Uh, kind of banking off that, last week, uh, this person uh, loved your message about saying no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> It would, be, it would definitely make my life so much better. Uh, so what have you come to the conclusion of that you know, saying no is not going to either upset people or if they say no, that it's going to upset the friends that they have? How do you kind of get over that? Um, you have to understand. I just had a discussion with one of my doctors about this. By saying no, what you're doing is actually you're controlling your time. You're controlling your own life. Do you know this? I mean, it's very simple. Um, what you're going to do today or tomorrow, you're going to find out, unless you really know yourself, the majority of your time is going to be controlled by somebody else. It really is. And you will resent, and I will even say the word, even though I hate the word, you'll hate somebody that controls you. You really will. And, so, and, and, and they, can do it, they can do it by the most sneaky ways. Do you say, you need to do this. And they can treat, they usually do it by guilt. But it happens, you just got to understand that, listen, with that when you say no, you take control back of your decisions and your time and things like that. And no joke, um, you know, I've had people say different things and you got to do this. I'm like, no, I don't. You know what I'm or, or and just by saying no, you take control back of your time and life's more peaceful that way. It really is. And it's okay if somebody has a different opinion. I'm okay with that. People say, well, you really should be here. Well, no, you should really be there. You know, people are like, uh, Doc, you know, you won't go to the family reunion. No, don't want to. Is anything wrong with family reunion? No, I just don't want to do it. Do you understand? Um, why do I do it? Because I don't. Just, no, it's that simple. I want to, because 
I look at my time management and I go, there's certain things I want to do with my time. And if I look at things like that, I just can't put in my schedule. And therefore, I'm in control. And I'm also controlling my consequences, control my actions that way. And I tell people, I mean this sincerely, when I start saying no to everything that, that I didn't want to do within my life, my life got better. My life grew. And I think I've accomplished something in my life so far. If I said yes to everything, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? If you say yes to everything, it's actually you'd end up under being controlled by everybody else. And I always use the example of holidays. Ladies, I mean this sincerely. You guys run around, pack up your kids, you're all stressed out. I love this all the time. It's like, you know, I, that's gonna happen. You know, do you know how many people are gonna do this tomorrow? Is they're gonna get up, they're gonna yell and scream at their kids, they're around, they're stressed out, and they're walking to church and smile like everything's okay. I'm like, just don't go to church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, why? I can watch it online. You know, well, you should go to church. No, you should go to church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna watch church when I'm hitting the golf course tomorrow. <laughs> that's it you say I'm just saying don't, don't sit there no now if you want to sit there great that's cool I'm all cool with that I just learned to say no and because my life you say him and you can say no to your spouse your kids your things away it's okay you say him and by doing that once again you now can control your time mm -hmm. and I tell you right now if you ever want to see success in any area of life learn to time match because then you can focus on things that's what I said when I get away I'm working on things to make my life better. So, great question. All right, so let's get a little bit more personal here. Oh, ready for these? So, dear Dr. Patrick, mm -hmm. I would be interested in a consultation. Do you ever do Zoom consultations? And if so, what's the fee? Uh, I'm a 53-year-old white female who had an um, oophorectomy at the age of 46. I'm generally healthy, um, and I'm a doctor as well, and a private business owner. I recently made the personal decision to not take synthetic hormones anymore. Honestly, other than weight gain after my oophorectomy, um, I really never had any other uh, classic menopause symptoms, um, either on hormones or not. I would certainly like to drop some pounds, but moreover, protect my overall health. I've been following you on Instagram and think that the similar core values as far as health, um, that she has similar uh, you know, core values. Um, she'd be really interested in speaking with you further about the possibility. Sincerely hope. Well, Dr. Hope, thank you for uh, messaging me. I appreciate that. Um, to let you guys know what oophorectomy is, is actually just having to remove the ovaries. Um, now, I will say this. If you've had your ovaries removed, let me be very clear on the stance and the wellness way perspective on this. If you've had your ovaries removed, you're going to need some support uh, because you've lost some production. You do. And that's why I do see bioidenticals work well. They really do. Um, I'm going to be more apt to a person use a drop or a cream than a pellet. I'm not saying that pellets can't be done really well, but I can tell you right now, the majority of pellets that we see from integrative doctors, their levels are so psychotically high, they, I see it cause problems. But the idea is this, but pellets can be done, they can be done safe, but that person's gonna need some form of biodynamic help. But even more often, remember, when you're in a menopausal state, remember this, ladies, your adrenals make a lot of your anabolic hormones. Let me say it again, your adrenals do. So when you are cyclic, the majority, the vast majority of your hormones are made by your ovaries. When you transition, when you transition, and if you act you're healthy, it will transition very quickly from cyclic to menopause. I actually get a lot of questions on perimenopause. I believe that perimenopause is more of a trumped up, made up term to actually extend a sick person's transition from cyclic to menopausal. But you gotta think of it this way. As you get older, ladies, it's so important for you to actually have adrenal health. Now, is it important to have liver and all? Yes, it is. But if you really look at when I'm getting so many questions about menopause, menopause is so dependent on the adrenals. That's why it's very important to actually regulate the stress levels mentally, physically, and chemically in a woman, especially during those later 40 years. So that when you actually get to your early 50s, when a decent transition will happen in the menopause, that you do that. Now, there's so much nutrients you need for the adrenals. Heck, no joke. If you look at a good adrenal glandular, that's one thing great to take because eating that adrenal gland actually helps you reproduce and helps support the adrenals. Second of all, I will say this as long as you actually are coached by one of the doctors that way and guided, I will say that licorice is probably my favorite menopausal thing to take during menopause or in that stage of life. Now, do I put every woman on licorice that came in menopause. No, because if I'm dealing with a woman that is, is going into menopause, which is a normal stage of life, I have great testing done on her. 
So, and then people ask the ultimate question. Um, I'm gonna be very direct about this. Uh, gotta remember, I may be up here teaching all the time, but every one of their practitioners, this is secondhand nature to them. The stories that you saw with Dr. Sam, we're gonna keep on putting up more, more stories of all the doctors across the country that are doing that. Um, I personally um, do not take many, if at all, any calls uh, and take care of patients. Do I still take care of patients today? Yes, I know I've said I don't, but what I meant by that is I don't take care of new ones. If I do see a new person, I talk to them for a very short time and then they see a practitioner that's closest to them in their area or if they're even here. Um, because I, I'm still clinically obsessed, guys. You know, I know people know that I'm running around speaking and we have a big company now and everything all over, but I'm still obsessed with clinical things. When I train these student docs that way or I train, train the student program down in life or the ones I go teach it that way, I'm teaching them detailed clinical things, so I still get obsessive. So when this doctor now reaches out and, and asks that question, my desire is like to get on a Zoom call, get on a phone call there like right now. Then I step back and go, wait, 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 wait. There's only so much time in a day, and I have to sometimes say no. But no does not mean you're not taken care of. I will have a doctor reach out to you. If you now let's do this. Um, if you are not, if you are not, uh, a wellness way patient already and you want to actually just have a conversation with one of my docs, please do me a favor. Email me actually where you're located and just say, hey, listen, I'd like to talk to one of your docs at askdrpatrick at the and I'll get one on the phone with you just for a quick, nice little call and see like this. So, so the doctor reach out. I, if you let me know where you are, the reason I want you to know where you are because let's say you're in Wisconsin, but let's say you're in Southern Wisconsin. I may have Dr. Andrew. Or, or other docs reach out to you that way. I may have Dr. Uh, Stephanie. I may have all the docs. You know, reach out. Jenny can be down there. There's a lot of different docs. If you're in California, I may have Dr. Thor reach out to you because it's in that area. It might not be directly that close, but it's actually in your area that way. So do me a favor. If you, if you are not a patient, I can't be a Wellsway patient already because you already have a doc, uh, and you have a quick uh, discovery call like that, do me a favor. Send an email to askdrpatrick at thewellsway.com. It's kind of funny. Three emails popped up already. Just let me know the state that you're in, the city that you're in, because what we'll do is we'll actually have a doc call you. But uh, yeah, there's great things in doc. Thanks for that question. All right, uh, going on that oophorectomy, can you still ovulate um, or still cycle with one ovary? Okay. Can you still ovulate and uh, cycle with one ovary? Yes. Yes, you can. You really can. Um, the one thing is this. You know, when women say to me, say, doc, I've had a full hysterectomy and I'm 35 years old. Do I still cycle? Actually, you do, because your cycle is controlled by your pituitary, controlled by the brain, brain. and therefore you're gonna release FSH and LH. Now the only thing is this, you have no responsive organs like the ovary to produce estrogens and things like that, so your body actually doesn't menstruate, so you don't have a menstrual cycle, but you actually do have the hormone cycles of releasing that. Now, you can have one ovary or, uh, or both ovaries, and you can still produce an egg, ovulate, you just have less chance of you know, pregnancy because you only have one ovary, but you can still produce a significant amount of hormone from that ovary and release an egg from there and still get pregnant. So yes, that does happen. Um, there are people that do have ovarian cancer that I've even encouraged to have one ovary removed, um, and they do, and they recover great from cancer and things like that, and, but they still have a cycle, they still ovulate, because basically they cut off the one fallopian tube, pull up their ovary, uterus and the other ovary and fallopian tube are still intact, so therefore you can still ovulate, still drop it down, still get pregnant, and that does happen all the time. You'd be surprised how many women, I can honestly tell you, I know over a thousand women that have had just one ovary. All right, um, <clears throat> so could food allergies be different based on whether it's uh, raw versus cooked or soaked? Um, my, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever had that. Mm -hmm. I believe it can. I really do. I, because it's kind of like this. Let's take an example that surprises everybody. You know, back in the, let's say, early 2000s, a big health food was soy. And people would always say, well, Doc, look at how much protein soy has. Sure, but you take it out of context because there's so many anti-nutrients that it affects so many parts of your body, I would never want anybody to eat it. So therefore, here's what happens. And, and a, a food allergy is nothing more than creating an immune reaction to take out something that doesn't belong in your body. Now, when you ferment, when you soak, when you do proper food preparation, you change some of the properties of those foods that your immune system may not react to anymore. So 
that's why when you, and I, my biggest preparation that I love for food is, how do I, how do I uh, yes, fermentation, fermented foods. See, I'm always looking at my, my trained interns and they get it right. When you look at the best preparation for foods, it really is fermentation. I love f fermenting things. And you can ferment basically anything. You really can. And you can make it, and what you do is you can take some of the properties that could be inflammatory. You can take some of the properties that create an immune reaction and you can change them. And so therefore what happens is you take something that could be unhealthy and make it healthy. Now people say, well, doc, that does happen with soy. Yes, but there's so many healthy things to eat. I don't want to pick that food. I just don't want to take a chance. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'd rather, you know, eat a fermented cabbage than eat a fermented soy. Um, you can get the same nutrients and same things from other foods. So I just move towards that. So um, yes, how you do prepare it can actually reduce the chance to have an immune response or allergic response to it. Mm. All right, so you've had more experience in this, but I've seen this enough within the past so three months at okay. least. Um, so I've been struggling with hormone issues and have seen over 20 doctors and everyone thinks I'm crazy. Doc, it's, it's sad that you've only been here for three months interning and that that is a very common thing that you see here in this office. Now, let's do this. I'm going to defend all the current doctors that she has seen that has caused her, called her crazy. Because, once again, the reason why we call this show A Different Perspective and is this. It's just, you know, like I tell people, you know, I mean, it's sincere that you know I love my graph. Guys, what... what um, mm -hmm. shape do you see here? If you're looking straight on, you see a rectangle. And you will sit there and say, Doc, I see a rectangle. It's a rectangle. It's a rectangle. I'm like, cool. But what if you're sitting over here? What if you're sitting over here? You see it like this. See, it's, it's all from where, you're, where your perspective is. No, it's, a, it's more of a straight line. It's more of a straight line. And you'll have two people argue about it that way. Now, I'd be the person to say, I don't care what shape it is. It's a phone. You're holding it in your hand. You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming from a totally different perspective on it going, so here, here's the point, is those doctors who probably did a wonderful job, now it's going to sound funny, you have a doctor, they think I'm crazy, no, no, what they did is this, they probably did an absolutely wonderful job from their perspective, and you guys know I call it the fire department perspective, they're looking for a disease, so they do blood work, they do a CT, they do x-rays, they do all these things, looking for all these major diseases, and they go, Miss Jones, I don't know what her name is, just because they have Miss Jones, Miss Jones, can't find anything. Everything's normal. And what they really mean is you're not on fire. You're not dying. Your house isn't burning down. And so this woman who's suffering in her relentless, relentless pursuit to actually live a healthy and good life is, isn't giving up, and I commend her for that. But asking the same doctors their perspective. Let's, let's do this. Haley who actually did wonderful due diligence. She got an opinion from a doctor who said, kill your baby. Went to another doctor. Did you, did you see what I said in the first thing though? Got an opinion from the first doctor. Do you understand that everything doctors give you is opinions based on their perspective? Don't believe me? What did Fauci's opinion did? They just tried to use the government to force that opinion to everybody. And you're gonna find out at the end of the last 10%, boy, our perspective is, we predicted all this happening now. And the sad part is this. She went to another person that had the same perspective, said, kill the baby. Another person, kill the baby. Another person, kill the baby. And, it's, and then came to a different perspective, said, looked at all the labs, said, baby's just fine. So when the baby was born, it didn't need all the things that they thought were a sick baby inside of her. Because Haley herself was an extremely healthy mom and how she took care of herself. And so therefore, all of a sudden, when the babies came out, guess what happens? Healthy, happy, beautiful baby girls. So, young lady, the person who's born to 20 doctors and still think they're crazy, um, gotta remember, it's just that I would actually shake their hand and say, thank you, doc. I know I'm not dying. Now let's go find a doctor that actually can make me healthy. And that's a carpenter doctor. That's a wellness play practitioner. That's a person that understands health, as we talked about last show. We're gonna do a documentary on what is health. You know what I'm because that's what that woman wants. She wants the opposite of feeling horrible. But if they can't find any pathology, they think you're normal. So what happens is this. You need to find a practitioner that looks for the things that doesn't matter when it comes to a, a disease or fire. So great question. Yeah, yeah great answers. Um, yeah, so this next one's from Tawny. 
my sweet granddaughter just turned one. So my mama and daddy aren't doing immunizations. Daddy doesn't want them and mama wants to wait until she's two. She's on the fence about it and I think there are some that she really needs. With all this controversy about the stupid COVID shots, uh, my views on all the immunizations are changing. Uh, my views on all the medications is changing and um, you know she has more questions about it. She'd like your input on the immunizations themselves. She's trying to get me kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here, let's talk about some, some basic things that I said way before even the COVID vaccine and everything came out is this. I would say this, though. There's one thing that we have seen, which I've been very happy about, that came from the last couple of years that really destroyed people's lives. People found out they lie all the time. They lie. And if you use the word science and facts, yeah, there's a certain population that will fall for that trick. Do you see Sam? But as you can see, there is no science and facts. There is no safe and effectiveness. You can see what's happening now. And that's why, once again, when it comes to all vaccines that way, they do the same thing they did with COVID vaccine. They lie and they say the same catchphrases. They're safe and effective. They'll benefit, outweigh the risk. But here's what happens. Just let's take it from a very simple immunological standpoint. You got simple questions. Do immunizations of all kind make your immune system normal? See, my doctors are saying no. So that's a question you ask. Okay, does do immunizations make your immune system normal and does it make you healthy? No, she said. See, if you ask carpenter questions and then you go, what's the ingredients and contraindications? Well, I don't know the ingredients. Well, why don't you look them up? The ingredients alone will scare you. Contraindications means, for example, if you have a certain reaction to certain ingredients, you can't do it. And if you look at the ingredients, you go, well, everybody would react to those. See, so just going through some basic immunological principles that way, you would, I could justify that you would not do any of them. Just like my children, they have nothing. But wait, your daughter's trial over. How, they, how are they still living? You <laughs> say, I'm, it's, it, it, I know it's kind of funny, but that's what people think. So the idea is this, is your research should be, once again, what does it do to the immune system? And we see, we've seen currently now from all the stuff that I'm gonna show you on it, what happens, um, you can fall for their lies and their tricks and their catchphrases. You know, it's like, and guess what happens? But if you actually do your own research, do you know what's really funny? People say that anti-vaccine people are not scientific. That's not true. It's actually totally opposite. Because you know why? Most people are not anti-vaccine. They're ex-vaccinators. They actually had something go bad. And they start researching and going, oh my goodness. You understand that most moms that have researched, they realize that something detrimental happened to their kids or they knew something that happened to somebody else, and they start researching instead of just listening mm -hmm. the opinions of pediatricians, which pediatricians' main job and financial uh, benefit is actually vaccination. You know what I'm saying? So those are the things you gotta look at that way. So if you do your research that way, if, if you just look at how a shot works, you'd never do it ever, ever. You know what I'm saying? I always tell people this. We were doing the training. Dr. Sam was training the interns and some of the docs this past week and showing an immune panel. If you get a vaccine post-immune panel, it's disgusting what it does to the immune panel. It makes you very inflammatory and very sick. You say, that's why I tell people. And they've tricked people say, well, the benefits outweigh the risk. What they really mean is this, is they try to stimulate your immune system trying to catch a bug, but what if it destroys your heart? Can I get to that in a little bit? Good question. All right, uh, what would you recommend for a teenager who has acne and does the medication and gets results, but once this teenager stops using it, um, the acne comes right back. Ah, okay. So the majority of medications given for acne are a synthetic form of vitamin A. It's a synthetic form of vitamin A. It's high doses, it's really scary. It really puts a burden. If you look at the medications for acne, they actually have a lot of liver problems with it because you're not supposed to process that much vitamin A synthetically. But it does work. But it does work, and even the person seeing. See, I've never denied that medications can work, but if the medication now destroys your liver, do you see what I'm saying? See, and, and I guarantee that child, if they did a liver panel on them, they may see their enzymes are going high and things like that, and that's why a lot of people get negative side effects. See, that's why I like, is it justified to change the skin but destroy the liver? See, I know it's basic questions, but when you think like a carpenter doctor, when you think like a Wellsway doctor, a Wellsway practitioner, you go, but doc, the skin's bad. And the only time it's good is when you take the medication. 
okay? But then if you look at how the body works like a bunch of gears, the skin gear seems to do better, but then it destroys the liver gear or destroys the kidney gear. So can you justify that? I can't. I'm sitting there going, let's walk backwards. See, the reason why I studied medications and still do so much is because when you find out what they do, there's usually some synthetic replacement like, like vitamin A or hormone replacement. There's some manipulation of some pathway. For example, if I were to say, if uh, Fremura, for women that are, have breast cancer know exactly what I'm talking about. It's an aromatase inhibiting medication. It inhibits conversion into certain hormones. Well, instead of inhibiting, why can't we find out the hormones, why they're bad and why they won't convert? See, it's a different perspective. So watch this. So Dr. Jane and Dr. Carolyn, you're sitting right here. They're going through all the Facebook and things like that. Question for you. If the medication is a synthetic form of vitamin A, what would be your perspective that they may want to do to maybe see if the skin changes in a different way? Yeah, they just said it. Eat some vitamin A. You said, Jenny, Dr. Jenny said, right, eat some liver, high vitamin A. I know it sounds simple, but no joke. So if that case is not working because, and because you don't take it, but it actually comes back in synthetic vitamin A, simple question for you. Maybe you start eating some vitamin A. You say, and, and vitamin A people are so deficient in one of our important fat soluble vitamins because people, and if you are dominant in a plant-based diet, it's a bad day because you, people have, you ever notice vegans have really loose skin and they wrinkle easy and things like that? Ladies, you want to have good, sexy skin, glowing, get some organ meats in your diet. Not a joke, really. And do you understand that I'm telling you a very cost-effective, simple thing that you can do that will give you a great cosmetic look? So, yep, I would say that that young teenager is vitamin A deficient, fat soluble deficient. Now watch this, ladies, something that does scare me. And I talk about ladies because obviously cosmetics and skin, things like that. Do you understand that one of the major surgeries that really make women age, does anybody want to take a guess what surgery is? Gallbladder surgery, mm -hmm. gallbladder. Because you need bile timed perfectly to absorb your fat soluble vitamins, which are great for skin and hair and everything like that. And so therefore gallbladder surgery is still the number one surgery done every single year. That leads to a, a reduction of your fat soluble vitamins, which are essential, essential for life, including your skin and looks. So women that have had their gallbladder removed, or even males, need to take some form of bio, uh, ox bile before each meal. Every day, every day. Every meal, every meal. See, I wish doctors, surgeons would go, your gallbladder's bad, we need to remove it. And I may not even disagree. I've seen major gallstones are so big, there's no way of changing that. And the pain's so bad. I have no problem with the surgery. I think it's successfully done, in my opinion. But I've seen surgeries that people have come to me and I'm like, holy crap, you need surgery. But I have to tell you this, that when you get surgery, you actually now do not have the sensory organ that releases your bile at proper times. And you're going to take some form of bile during each meal. Otherwise, you can eat the healthiest organ meats, the healthiest fats, and you won't be able to emulsify them and absorb them. So, yep. Right? Ready for some thyroid questions? Sure. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, so to start off, uh, is T a TSH a valuable marker to determine thyroid problems? Oh, so is TSH a valuable marker to determine thyroid problems? Um, all markers that you test for, I believe, are valuable. Can you make major clinical judgments from medications and surgeries based on TSH? I think that's a big fallacy. I think it's a huge fallacy. When I started practice, and still the gold standard of all thyroid care for men and women is still based on TSH. Thank God, end of 2010, 2011, 12, they started to actually test a little bit more. But in 2000 and 1999, I was testing all the values. What do I mean? If you look at TSH, it's a valuable marker uh, because it tells you the pituitary action, the little gland in your brain that says, hey, TSH, thyroid stealing hormone, I want to tell the thyroid to work. But and people, doctors say, well, if it's elevated, that means that your, that your uh, production of thyroid hormones are low. 
Okay, which ones? Start there, which ones? T4, T3, T1, T2, which ones? Well, doesn't matter. Just give them T4, which is, the, which is back then, was majorly Synthroid, and now the, the Levothyroxine is the dominant medication. But that's a T4. But what if you're T3 deficient? Do you see that? Okay, so we're gonna make the judgment on even what to give medication-wise just based on the brain hormone? You know, that'd be like this. LH and FSH are a pituitary hormone, and they are stimulating hormones for progesterone and estrogens. So if I just see LH and FSH abnormal, do I now just give estrogens and progesterones and just throw a dose at them and see how they feel? That's basically what they do with levothyroxine and Synthroid. Isn't that funny? You would do that with no other medication. You would never give estrogens and progesterone based on LH and FSH. You would never do it. You'd investigate more. You'd dig a little deeper. Yet the gold standard for all endocrinologists, all GPs, is based on TSH. Man, that is an incomplete view of the body and is downright dumb. Now, I'm not downplaying that TSH is not a good marker. I run it all the time. But to make a clinical judgment based on that, so the next time someone says your TSH is elevated or TSH is low, okay, cool, what's my T4, T3, what's my antibody? And they go, what? So that's why when I sat there as a 24-year-old young man going, well, maybe we should write T4, T3, free T4, free T3, TGB, da 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 and writing all these labs down. And now when a patient comes back, regardless of what their TSH is, you have a more complete picture of all of the gears that not only what this is producing, but the factors that affect it. So is TSH valuable? Yes. Should it be used solely to judge what you do clinically? Absolutely not. So then why does it seem that so many women have thyroid problems? Uh, she's watched your video so many times and it makes more and more sense from the MD's approach. Okay. Um, just go back to this. Let's go back to that Swiss watch idea. Now remember, I love analogies. So I use things like Fiber Carpenter to explain the kind of difference of thinking of practices. I love to explain the human body by using like a term like, t like a Swiss watch. Just picture a bunch of gears. If you take a back of a watch and you look at all the gears working together, even the smallest, littlest gear can do what? Can actually can affect how the even big gears and fast gears are working. Thyroid is one of the gears. So therefore, um, I will tell you this. I do believe that women actually will have more thyroid problems because of the other anabolic hormones like estrogen. Estrogens can affect the thyroid. And therefore, guess what? A woman's cycle as she changes four times in the month and estrogen production change, that can affect the thyroid. Um, women actually have a lot of immune problems. 90%, uh, the last statistic I read was actually 93% of all thyroid problems are autoimmune, which means there's some immune factor. I believe that, especially as you can see with the past history of certain vaccines, that um, their immune systems are very assaulted. So therefore, there's a major factor that goes there. Um, toxicity has a very big thing to do with it that way. Uh, if you don't realize that when the blood is pumped, that beside your brain, the thyroid gets the most blood flow of any organ. And women use very toxic cosmetics. They use very things that are very toxic and your fat soluble organs, like your thyroid, absorb a lot of toxins. Um, it's very affected by women virally. Uh, Epstein-Barr and some other viruses, if they're immune compromised, can really affect the aspect of the thyroid. And see, what I just showed you there was all the multifactual things that can do it. So when you approach a woman or a man's thyroid problem, if you just think it's a lack of levothyrox or synthroid in your body, man, it just looks, shows you how ridiculous the medical field and integrative field want to just jack you up with some synthetic or even a natural form like armor or nature thyroid. And I'm more, and they're wrong. If you've had your thyroid removed, you need more of a natural form. Get some medical advice and get some, uh, get some armor or nature thyroid on your, on your docket instead of levothyroxine and thyroid. You know, get it, go to a good interview with a doctor and get some of that stuff from them and ask them to prescribe that for you. And they will, um, if they know what they're doing with it. And the thing is this is like, but to sit there and go, all those factors that can throw off a thyroid. And we're just like, yep, TSH is off. Here's levothyroxine the rest of your life. Man, 
you actually thought like we did, it would scare you to even take their opinion. All right. Uh, next question. I have tinnitus. Doctors say that there's nothing that can help. Do you know of anything that can help with that? Okay. When you look at tinnitus, there's only really two factors that are the major players. Now, yes, you can have permanent damage in the ears and things like that that do that. That happens. I see that. Um, but two major factors, number one, fluid in the ears, number two, adrenal problems. All right? Because those are two major things that contribute to it. I would look at fluid in the ears. And that's why if you notice, if, you're, if you consistently have some form of infection, that can come from viral, come from overgrowth of bacteria, it can come from gut problems. If you actually have adrenal problems, that can lead to it that way. Those are two major contributing factors. So what is the wellness way perspective on mole removal? Uh, this person's had 20 moles removed since they were in their early 20s and they're now over 40. Every year they seem to find more and more suspicious moles. Um, I don't have a problem with mole removals. I don't. You know, Sam? It's like this. If you have a tumor that's growing right here, take it off. Don't, you know, I know a lot of people uh, like, well, well, doc, you know, it's a surgery. I'm not against drugs or surgery. I'm just saying if it's a mole that can turn out something bad, your chance of reversing and get rid of it, probably not going to happen. So have it removed. Now, if it's constantly popping up, I'm going to tell you right now, you have some major immune issue. You say, and I would get an immune panel done. I'd be checking your immune system because the consistency of those skin turning into moles that way, which can be precancerous, there's some major immune issue that way. Do I have, a, my perspective is, I've told people say, doc, look at this mole, and it's growing. I'm like, yeah, go to the dermatologist, get their advice, and majority of the time they do remove it, and I'm, I'm in support of it. Yeah, just like the fireman carpenter, we yep. always have a, a time and a place for something. Yep. All right, so here's a very common one with the population. Okay. Uh, when I eat, my stomach balloons up. Doesn't matter what I eat. Yes. Yeah, that's a very common one. Now, I want you to think about this. Let's go back to my favorite way of processing foods, which is what? Fermentation. Okay? You ever ferment something, there's a bunch of gas and, and things like that to come up with that way? Now, whenever you eat, and all of a sudden you get the food baby every time. I always love this. When people are like, oh, Doc, oh, yeah, I'm all nice and full, and they pull their belly. I'm like, dude, you didn't eat 25 feet of food. <laughs> you saying? So your whole intestinal tract isn't full of 25 feet of food. And it's still sitting in your stomach, which is up underneath your rib cage. So unless your rib cage is popping out, it's to here. Okay? So what happens? Well, once you think about this, is you have roughly 18 to 21 feet of small intestine. Yeah, there's a lot. You see him? Um, and then you have roughly anywhere from three to five feet of large intestine. The majority of your fermentation the majority of it, not all of it, happens within the large intestine. That's where you have most of your bacteria, and that's why it expands. It's okay because it actually, you can see that it's supposed to expand because it's large. Food's supposed to get bigger and produce things like that. If it happens in the small intestine, imagine having a garden hose that could expand. Do you see them? I have one of those garden hoses that will get down. You can actually wrap it up into a little ball, and all of a sudden the water comes. You put the water in, it goes, whoosh, and it expands pretty big. Okay, imagine this. Imagine that the fermentation process in your mm -hmm. small intestine starts there. It expands. And it doesn't matter what you eat. So currently, you might have suffer from SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But I'll tell you right now, you probably have some stomach acid problem and some gallbladder problem, majority of stomach problems. You need to acidify your stomach. Acidify your stomach. Come back to this, though. What's a good food source for that? Apple, cider, vinegar. You know, Sam? Betaine hydrochloride. Things that you could take, things that you can do. Um, so therefore, I do like the acidity of our stomach, and you have to have a very low pH, because then it kills and regulates some of the bacteria, so you're not having that constant bloating every time you eat. The fermentation process is just happening too early, and you're gonna bloat and expand, and so happens this. It doesn't matter if you do your food allergies or not. A person that bloats all the time from every food, I don't even test food allergies right away because without getting that bacteria under control, you're not going to get a really great testing result from it. Mm -hmm. Okay? This next question really kind of like motivates me personally, and uh, this is really kind of our perspective as a wellness way. Um, so this person wrote in, you know, I hope somebody responds. I'm a 43-year-old woman. I've had major trauma, struggled for years with depression, headaches, heart palpitations, dizziness, mood swings, anger, sadness, PMS, cramps. Um, she sleeps eight to 10 hours a day, but still tired all the time, has zero joy, um, and all while trying to raise two boys on her own. 
Uh, she found us on Instagram and has a tiny glimmer of hope. Uh, I'm going to go on the 21 to get lab work. Uh, can you specify what I should get tested? Please help. Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> um, personally, the stuff that she said just off the top of my head. Now remember, do not take this as recommendations. I'm not doing a consult over <laughs> live here. But a stool test, because I think there's some microbial overgrowth, and a thyroid hormone would be my two factors I would start. Because there's some immune factor, there's some hormonal issue going on there, there's some anabolic problems going on there, anabolic steroid hormones. And so therefore, I would like to get a picture of several of those gears and see how they're doing. Now remember, go back to my analogy, Swiss watch, bunch of gears. So that would probably be the two tests that I would start there right there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I would, then I would, could start on some healthy things right away as far as we talk about vinegar, coconut oil, you know, cabbage or sauerkraut, get some organ meat, start with that as your labs come back that way. Try to start to reduce that inflammation, reduce your sugar like crazy, your simple sugars, get rid of those as quickly as possible. So that would be my first part of that, but there's a lot going on there, but I think there's some big time major immune issue that's leading to some hormonal and uh, thyroid and also some anabolic steroid hormone problems. All right, Doc, I watch your TikTok and Instagram videos. People freak out when you talk about menopause, but you're spot on. Why don't people just get it? That's a good question. <laughs> um, let's, why don't they get it? Okay, I want you to picture something, okay? I want you to picture that someone comes to you and presents ideas, because that's all I do. I share some ideas. You say, I tell people, like the ideas, cool. Don't like the ideas, cool. You say, share some ideas that challenge what you've been taught your whole life. I mean this sincerely. Do you understand? To do what I do for a living, to do what I do for a living, I had to tell, I had to look at everything my parents did, everything my extended family did, everything that basically they even teach you in school and say, nope, you're wrong. Do you say Now, I put it that way because I knew right there it's gonna make people triggered and offended. And offended. Do you say But I mean this sincerely. We're on the same kind of path I was as a, as a kid and it's gotten worse. And how's everybody doing healthcare-wise? They're getting worse. So if we continue on that path with the same ideas, What's going to happen 20 years from now? I mean, think of this. I had to look and go, you know, eating Captain Crunch and then for lunch, Wonder Bread with salami, Velveeta cheese, uh, Miracle Whip, uh, Lay's potato chips, crunch it all, eat they, probably didn't lead to good things for me. And darn, all of our parents, all of our people, all you guys as parents are trying to do the best thing. So when I come along with a different idea, People automatically thinking that I'm that you're saying th this. Well, I mean it sincerely. When people are freaking out about the stuff I said about menopause, I'm like, okay, just do me a favor. What's your idea, and how are we doing with menopause right now? How are we doing? Do you get it? It's like how are we doing? And most people say we're not doing well. Well, then we should have a different perspective on this. So, just a thought. But I think they freak out because it challenges what they've been taught their whole life. It challenges them what they hear on TV. It challenges them what the experts tell you. Got a question for everybody. Mm -hmm. Women in menopause, how you doing? Okay. Honestly, that kind of, um, that kind of answers this next question because it's uh, asking, why does it seem like everyone I talk to is suffering from health problems? It's basically the same answer yep. <laughs> because it's interesting. So give me an idea. I'm very excited about this. Do me a favor. If you're seeing somebody that you haven't seen for a while, maybe a family member, maybe a friend, and just in conversation, just for a little fun, ask a person what health is. Say, what is health? And you're going to find out they give you the deer in the headlight look and say, well, you know, so before asking a question, mm -hmm. just ask me, answer me this. Do you want to be healthy? Yes. See, people don't want to answer that right. Second of all, do you want your kids to be healthy? Yes. Parents, yes. Family members, friends, loved ones, yes, 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 yes. 
And you find out that everybody wants it. Everybody wants it for everybody. Everybody wants it for their kids. Everybody wants it for themselves. And then ask the second question again. Well, what is it? And you're going to find out you're going to get deer in the head that look like, uh, it's this. Here, in our last 10%. What's Doc? It's exercising me and fit. I'll disprove that. You say, Sam? It's eating good. Disprove that. You say, Sam? And the reason I bring that up is this. You're going to find out that the majority of people do not know what it is. And actually, 99.99% of people have no idea what it is because you're not taught health. You're taught fires. Don't believe me? Let's do this. If I put a pink ribbon right here, a pink ribbon right here, what's the first thing that pops in your head? See, every guy said, even Travis, breast cancer, and he's a male. You've been conditioned from little on to do these certain things. And so therefore, traditionally, you follow the herd. And then somebody comes along and says, I have a different perspective. And people freak out. So I just ask some simple questions. When I started practice, type 2 diabetes was called adult onset. 2004 or five, they changed it. Why'd they change it? Because kids have it like crazy now. And it's getting younger and younger. So our kids are getting sicker, younger and younger. Remember, when I was a kid, grandma and grandpa are the ones that got sick and died. You know what's really funny? We just had the 4th of July holiday. No one could get through a weekend talking to a group of people where someone's not complaining about some healthcare addition somebody suffered from. This person has cancer, this person can't cover this. It's, it's common talk now. You're going to find out more people talk about how people are ill than how people are enjoying life. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I don't want to go to family reunions. <laughs> All I do is complain. <laughs> it's like, I don't. It's like, this is, grandma's sick. This I'm going, I can't handle it. I can't. I'll be like, you know, I go to family reunions or go to anything. It's like crappy food everywhere. And they're talking how sick they are. I'm like going, well, Doc, you're not being nice. I'm not trying to be nice. I'm trying to make an impact on people's lives because when you sat across from me and you're sick and you're suffering and you're crying and you can't sleep and you're, and you're overweight and all these problems, I'd rather not be nice for a short time so you're not suffering later. Guess what happens? As a parent, I'm going to be tough on my children so later in life they're not a pain in the butt. Next question. That's it? That's it? That's all I got so far. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh my goodness. That went by fast. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Carolyn, for everything that way as we get to our wonderful doctor interns here and some of that. So now what we're going to do, we are going to move into our last 10%. Now, something that has dear to my heart, which has caused controversy, which caused me to be censored, caused me censored, caused me to, you know, people be upset about what I said, people be love what I said, is based on some simple concepts that I want to kind of go over with you and actually show you some of the things that were predicted and the sadness of it. And my heart does break. So as I told, as, as Patrick asked me a question, would you rather, you know, be with people or without people? I love being by myself because it allows me to think allows me to process, allows me to help to predict, allows me to see things because, you know, I want everybody to have a better future. I want everybody to have a better future health-wise. I want to have a better, I want people to have a better future business-wise. I want Dr. Jenny and Dr. Kelly and Patrick and all interns, all doctors to succeed in life, succeed in their relationships. So I sit back and, and I go, if this is done, this is a bad day later in life. And that's why I'm, and I do that with my kids. You say, and, the whole idea is having some planning time and some reflection time, and that's the good part. And I created some slides some time ago when I started teaching about the immune system that I believe that, listen, concepts that need to be done on a regular basis, because if you can get these kind of concepts, going forward, you can talk about the immune system and certain things. And as you can see from the graphic here before, you know, we're talking about the germ theory versus train theory. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna use my own personal experience, but let's look at this. You put the fish in the, the, the bad water, guess what happens? Ah, back, and guess what? It, it, I can guarantee that fish is not gonna have a you know, good thing happen to him over time. 
Yet, based on the train theory, take care of your system and guess what happens? You're gonna be just fine. Disease comes from a weakened immune system. It's not the bug. Okay, come back to me, Travis, on this one. So I want you to think about this. Um, I have to travel a bunch, I do. And before I went to England and uh, Ireland, I had to go to, uh, to Florida, Atlanta. And I will tell you this, I'm in different environments. Uh, sometimes I don't sleep perfectly. Sleep's the thing that gets me the most. If you want to see me crash a little bit, it's my sleep. I like to be in bed, like I said, by nine o'clock, I wake up whenever I wake up. And guys should get seven to eight hours sleep a night. Women should get eight to 10. Uh, women do need more than men. That's going to talk about men that are different than women. But what does happen is this. So obviously went over to Ireland, six hours ahead on a plane. You don't get good sleep, things like that. And no, no, I came back with a little bit of sniffle. You understand? And that's okay. Because why? My train was a little bit weak from things that way, but they're wrong. Um, am I going to die from the bug? No. Yeah, it went through a little bit, expelled it pretty great that way. But if I kept that train poisoned like that one fish on a regular basis, guess what happens? Then all of a sudden, there could be a virus, there could be a bacteria that could literally kill me. See, people think like, um, I don't believe that viruses or bacteria can kill you. Yeah, they can. They can devastate your, your life. And I do, I do, when you talk about, I was talking about the thyroid before. You know, people say, Doc, you mentioned Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr can hurt the thyroid. Yeah, but you have to have a weak immune system first. It's not just Epstein-Barr, because basically everybody has Epstein-Barr. I, I always love people, they want to look for one major thing. It's all Epstein-Barr. I, I saw that in one of our posts. It's not all Epstein-Barr. Everybody, has, I have Epstein-Barr. If I drew my blood right now, it's dormant. My body is probably dormant in everybody's in this room's body. Do you see him? And yes, if your immune system is weakened, that virus can grow and even affect your thyroid and other tissues. So I'm not saying it can't be effective, but here's what happens this. It's based on the terrain. It's based on what goes on that way. So I can't understand that we will put things in our body that make this train poisoned from a shot, from a food to anything. That's why when people say they get catchphrases, the benefit outweigh the risk. No, everything's okay in moderation. No, see his hand? That word no can go a long ways, you know? Um, you have to close your business. No. You have to take the shot. No. See his hand? It's really funny. When I was in school, it's, it's hilarious that, uh, that uh, the, my international best-selling book was I Disagree. You ever want to drive somebody absolutely nuts? Is if they say something, say, I disagree. And don't argue. Do you understand that they will argue like crazy to get them to, you, to conform to you to do their point? I disagree. Look what happened over the last two years with COVID. I disagree. What? I'm a, the expert. I disagree. No. You need to get shot. No. Do you see it? You can really find out what people believe just by saying, I disagree. And I've done it my whole life. And the sad part is this, the things that, that I said a long time ago, and they're all on videos of the past. They really are. They're on the website, the ones that were censored and even taken off YouTube. But you got to understand, I tell people, say, listen, you got to jump out of that theory. So I love this picture right here going, hey, listen, jump, get out of here. You know, jump out of that germ theory idea and get to the train and take care of it. Because that's our perspective. That's the part that we love. And the sad part is this, if we do not, things like this are gonna happen on a regular basis. It's really sad what, what I read this morning that you can see from here. And it was somebody from Wisconsin, Whitewater. College basketball player, 20 dies, drops dead of cardiovascular event. Look at the guy. Just take a look at his picture right there. Do you think he exercises? Think he's physically fit? Sure. I don't know his nutritional thing is that way, which can contribute to heart problems. I don't know his mental stress is right there. But maybe somebody put something in his terrain to actually cause his heart to swell up. And let's say it wasn't that. Got a question for you. Just got a question for you. Did he have a doctor take care of him? So I mean sincerely. Who was his pediatrician? Who was a general practitioner? Taking care of him before that. I mean that sincerely. Because don't you guys go to doctors for people to help you and stay healthy? I mean this sincerely, and I'm a little bit more dramatic on my words, so follow me with this. But if you're 40 years old, ladies, and you're under care of a pediatrician, general doctor, OB, everything like that, and they're telling you, yep, clean bill health that way, all of the goods like that, see you in the new year, do all this stuff, here, take this medication, this is the way, you end up with cancer, 
I'd go up and punch him in the face. Remember, I'm being dramatic about it. I'm not saying go do that. But I'm being dramatic, making my point, going, you were, you, you're the expert. You told me to trust you. You told me to be under your care. You were going to help me. Because they won't take responsibility and say, it's genes. It's environmental factors we can't control. There's always excuses after. And the sad part is this. To the point where, I told you before, most people, most doctors comply. And lo and behold, stories like this are popping up everywhere. Fifth Ontario doctor in the same hospital suddenly dies of past two weeks. 27-year-old triathlete. She exercises every day. You have to be a triathlete. Swim, bike, run. She died during the swim. And they don't know why. Can't find any disease. See, as I said before, you can't consistently poison the terrain and expect the fish to actually grow up healthy. You can't. Because you're going to find out that most people don't know what health is. That's the perspective I want you to get. You need to wake up every day and say, I'm going to do everything I can to be healthy. And that's why you need to get up and go, it's not a good day, it's a great day. I'm alive. You get up and say, man, it sucks, this, this, this. You're taken away from your health. You really are. You need to get up and either fast or have some black, organic blackberries or some food that you're not allergic to that way. Have a good breakfast. Because if you have Captain Crunch or other cereals that are bad, you poison the terrain. You need to find something that you love every day and do it. See, I get to do this every day. It's kind of fun. You say, I'm, enjoy it. Eat some lunch, make sure it's good. Don't poison the terrain. Go through the day, walk outside, look at the beautiful sun. See, just even my language, beautiful sun, great day. People say, well, Doc, but you have it so good. Man, you ever see my Instagram and Facebook and attacks and comments about myself and blah, 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 blah? There's people that just despise me for what I do and, and who I am. But I don't care. I really don't. Because I got one shot at this. One shot. And not you, not my family, not my staff, not my business partners will ever control my life. Just like I don't control anybody else's life. I'd never want to be in control of somebody's life. I want to do life with people. So that when I put my head down the pillow, I call it the pillow test. Ah, I put it down. And no matter what if somebody thinks about me, I don't care if the most important people in my life actually don't like what I do. I don't. It's going to sound funny, but I don't. Because the minute you do, they control you and they control your time. And you'll eventually resent all of them. And that's an unhealthy life too. So I want you to go out there. Guess what happens? Do what you need to be healthy. You got one shot at this. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to the experts. Because I'm not you and you're not me. So I want you to enjoy one of our last couple days of July. It's been a beautiful month. Hear that? It's been a beautiful month. And could I give you a laundry list of things that have upset me in July? Probably. But guess what happens? I will still have a great day. And I'll still do everything I possibly can to accomplish what I want to, to be a healthy and happy individual. I want you guys to have an amazing day. Enjoy the great weekend. It's going to be beautiful out. Green Bay, get on the water. It's kind of crazy because one last story that I didn't plan on telling, but I took my daughters. We went to uh, joined uh, our team on a little kayak trip and talk about poisonous waters. I was like in the kayak looking in the river in the Bay of Michigan and going, man, I feel so sorry for the fish that live in this poison. And if you want to do some great research, if you look at the fish of the Bay, here in the Green Bay area that way. They have tumors, they're toxic, and even some of the fish have changed genders. They've done studies on that. 
because of the environment. I want you to have a great environment in here and I want you to have a great environment here because I wouldn't let my daughters jump in the water because I dearly love them. And I want this and this to be great the rest of their life. You guys have an awesome weekend. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.